Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today I have a few questions. Can I analyze the disappearance of Brian Laundrie? Is he alive or dead? And what happens to fugitives who disappear? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll go through a quick summary of the Gabby Petito, Brian Laundrie case, then analyze Brian Laundrie's disappearance. 22-year-old Gabby Petito and 23-year-old Brian Laundrie were a couple who was engaged. They left on a cross-country trip in a Ford van on July 2, 2021. They traveled to many different states and visited places like national parks. They would get into some trouble on August 12 in Moab, Utah, the police responded to a report of domestic violence. No arrests were made, but the couple had to separate for the night. On August 17, Brian flew back to his parents' residence in Northport, Florida. Both Brian and Gabby lived there with Brian's parents. Brian cleaned out a storage area and then went back to Utah to reunite with Gabby. On August 24, the couple left Salt Lake City and traveled to Grand Teton National Park in Wyoming. On August 27, an unusual text message was sent to Gabby's mother from Gabby's phone. That same day, the couple's van was spotted in Grand Teton National Park. Two different people reported that on or about August 29, Brian Laundrie hitchhiked with them. He was acting in an unusual manner during both encounters. On September 1, Brian showed up in Northport, Florida in the van. Gabby was not with him. Brian was alone. He would not talk to the authorities. The family retained an attorney. On September 4, Brian bought a new phone. On September 6, Brian and his family went camping about 75 miles away from the family's residence. They left the campground on September 7, according to the Laundry family attorney. On September 11, Gabby was reported missing. On or about September 13, Brian Laundry disappeared. The police thought that he disappeared on September 14 based on what his parents told them, but they ended up changing their story. Now they're saying that he disappeared on September 13, the day prior to the day they originally reported. It is believed that Brian left with a backpack, but did not take his cell phone and wallet. His parents said that he went to the Carlton Reserve, a massive wooded area in Sarasota, Florida. On September 19, the authorities found Gabby's body in Bridger Teton National Forest in Wyoming. Her death was ruled a homicide. A federal arrest warrant for Brian Laundrie was issued on September 22 for using two financial accounts that did not belong to him. The authorities are searching for Brian. There have been many unconfirmed sightings reported. The Laundrie family attorney has said that he believes Brian is still in the Carlton Reserve. At the time making this video, Brian has not been found and nobody has been charged with Gabby Petito's murder. Now moving to the analysis. The question here is this. Is Brian Laundrie still alive? The situation with Brian Laundrie is a low probability event, meaning this type of thing doesn't happen every day. It's not like there are hundreds of people who come back from trips without the romantic partner who was supposed to be with them and then disappear themselves unexpectedly. Because this doesn't happen often, there's not a lot of data on which to build any type of statistical analysis. There's no way to take a thousand similar cases and say, well, 80% were found alive or known to be alive and the other 20% were not. There are a couple of famous fugitive cases that I want to mention specifically, which could offer some perspective on the Brian Laundrie situation. The first case is that of Eric Rudolph. This case comes up frequently when we see discussions about Brian Laundrie because of the similarities. Eric Rudolph killed and injured a number of people using explosives and went on the run in a national forest in North Carolina. At first, law enforcement thought they would just run in there and grab him. How hard could it be? Then they learned that the forest was actually a pretty big place. They spent a lot of money trying to find him. They searched for a long time, but came up with nothing. Rudolph was experienced at wilderness survival. He was well prepared. Yet even he had to journey into populated areas to steal food. That was the only reason he was ever caught. The second case is that of Melissa Caddick. She was a financial advisor in New South Wales, Australia, 
who allegedly helped herself to about $13 million of invested funds that did not belong to her. She disappeared right after her home in Sydney was raided by the authorities. Because Melissa had traveled overseas many times and had access to millions of dollars, the authorities assumed that she disappeared to start a new life. She didn't live far from the ocean, but based on security camera footage, it didn't look as though she had made her way to the water. The authorities assumed she must have gone in a different direction. Sometime later, they would find one of her shoes washed up on a beach 250 miles south of Sydney. Unfortunately for Melissa, her foot was still in the shoe. The authorities, who had insisted that she was alive, had to admit that most people who are alive don't leave a foot behind. Now moving to the disappearance of Brian Laundry. I will analyze the situation by going through the relevant characteristics in this case and assigning a value to them. Let's look at the factors pointing toward the idea that he is alive and then the factors suggesting that he is not. Starting with the factors that are consistent with him being alive, like he's on the run trying to escape law enforcement, it's been reported that Brian Laundrie has a moderate level of survival skill. He has been known to camp and hike in the wilderness. He went on trips to national parks. He camped with his parents. It's been reported that he hiked on the Appalachian Trail for a while. There have been unconfirmed sightings of Brian in rural areas, like on the Appalachian Trail. Brian Laundrie returned home on September 1. If he no longer wanted to be alive, why did he bother returning home? He hired an attorney or allowed his parents to hire an attorney for him. This shows a future orientation. Dead people usually don't need attorneys. Brian was seen alive as recently as September 13. He appeared to be acting with a purpose, carrying a backpack and leaving behind a cell phone, which of course has the potential of being used to track him. His parents indicated that he went to the Carlton Reserve. Why would Brian have gone there if his intent was to die? Brian Laundrie's father came out to the Carlton Reserve to show the authorities trails and other places where Brian may have hiked, although this could have been a trick by the authorities to see if Brian's father would give something away, like to get him separated from his attorney and watch him closely. One could argue that Brian has received assistance after Gabby Petito's death. We don't know for sure, but it could be that his parents and attorney have helped him in some way. Who knows what type of help they may have provided, but in general, if somebody is receiving assistance, it makes sense that they intend to stay alive. Now looking at the evidence that supports the idea that Brian is living challenged, so to speak. He is thought to be in an area that is particularly rugged and dangerous. For example, the Carlton Reserve is populated by alligators. Typically, alligators are not considered compatible with human life when they're in close proximity. Assuming he has some way to filter water and protect himself from the elements, he still has the problem of food. He can't start a fire to prepare food without increasing the risk of being detected, and there is no good source of food where he is thought to be. There is a limit to how long he can live without eating. Before his disappearance, Brian seemed very intent on avoiding the consequences of his alleged behavior. No longer being alive would achieve that goal. If Brian is charged with murder at some point, which seems like a possibility, he would be facing life in prison, which to many people is a fate worse than death. When weighing all the evidence, what do I think about Brian Laundrie's living status? At this point, I think there's a better chance that he's alive than dead, but every day that passes by slightly decreases the probability that he's alive. Another question would be, if he is alive, where is he? Is he really in some wilderness area, or has he received assistance and found his way to some place more comfortable, like a hotel or another country? Some people doubt this whole story about the Carlton Reserve and these unconfirmed sightings on the Appalachian Trail. They think he did receive assistance, and he's long gone. If he's alive, I think there's a slightly better chance that he is on the run without significant assistance, but if he has help, catching him will be even more difficult. Moving to my final thoughts, as time goes on, interest in the Brian Laundry case will decrease. Assuming that he is actually alive, the mystery as to whether Brian Laundry is alive or has shuffled off the mortal coil only increases his chances of getting away. There is a theory about motivation. 
which argues that it is a product of three factors, valence, expectancy, and instrumentality. Of particular interest here would be expectancy. This is how much a person believes their additional effort will help them to achieve the desired result. If law enforcement believes that Brian Laundrie very well could be dead, this decreases expectancy and therefore lowers their motivation to find him. So in a sense, the mystery surrounding this case and time itself appear to be on the side of Brian Laundrie. Those are my thoughts on the Brian Laundrie disappearance. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis on this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.